Ciao friends! In this video we will see when and why to use distinct OR values in order to iterate the unique values of a column in your DAX measures. The two functions look similar, but in reality they are different. Let's start with a demo. You have probably already used distinct and values in your code. I want to give you the ability to make a quick choice between the two functions when you write a DAX code, making the right choice by default. In order to do that, I want to start with a quick review of the difference between these two functions and then we will see examples that will help us uh, explaining the reason for the best practices I will provide at the end. So we start with the uh, diagram view where we have a one-to-many relationship between two tables, in this case uh, between customer and sales. The difference between values and distinct exists when you have a one-to-many relationship and you operate with distinct on the one side of the relationship. So on one column of uh, these uh, uh, columns of, uh, of the customer table. In that case, distinct does not return the blank row that is created in case of an invalid relationship, whereas values includes that blank row, if that blank row exists. What does it mean? So let me recap. So when you have a one-to-many relationship, you have, for example, the, on the customer side, here on the one side, we have the customer key, which is, uh, in this case, the column that connects a customer to sales. And let's say that in customer key, we have number one, two, three, four, five. And let's say for a moment that this is uh, the entire content of the customer table. Number one to five uh, are the values for customer key. So if on sales, on the sales table, we have a, a big table that in the customer key column has one, two, three, two, five, sorry, yes, five, that's okay. In this case, all the values that we have on the many side of the relationship here on the sales table exist on the one side of the relationship. We call this a regular valid relationship. Valid relationship means that there are uh, no uh, values on the many side that don't exist on one side. But what happens if on the many side we have, for example, the value of 8? Now, 8 doesn't exist here, so on the one side of the relationship we don't have 8. At this point, uh, how this 8 value will be connected to the uh, customer table? Well, a special blank row is added here, so this row is blank, blank, blank. Is, it has blank on all the columns, including the column that defines the one-to-many relationship. And uh, whenever we do uh, an aggregation by customer country, customer name, we will see a blank row that includes uh, the um, transactions that are connected to this uh, row with 8. Same for 9, same for 12, and so on. So all the values that are on the many side of the relationship that do not exist on the one side of the relationship are connected to this special blank row that only exists when the relationship is invalid. So this relationship becomes invalid because we have these values that define the invalid relationship. Now when you create a model, usually you have a perfect model where all the values on the many side exist on the one side. So the idea is that when we design our code, we have to think about what could happen if uh, in the next refresh something bad will happen and on the many side we will have values that don't exist on the one side. That's the key to make the right choice. We have to plan in advance when something will go wrong. In order to do that I will show you several examples to define when uh, one function is better than the other and, and so on. So let's start with this example where we have uh, the sales amount by country and by brand. Now, brand is a column of the product table, whereas a country is a column of the customer table. So if, we, if I go to the diagram view, we're saying that the product table here is where we have the brand, this is the brand, and uh, customer has the country. So these are two different tables, and uh, in the data that we have, I know that we had transactions for all the products. So the product table is connected to the sales table with a uh, valid relationship, Whereas the connection with the customer table, and you see here in country, there are several customers on the sales table that don't exist in the customer table. 
they could be simply blank. If you have a blank customer key because the, the, the transaction doesn't have a related customer, that's a, the same case. But also when you have a customer key that, don't, that doesn't exist on the customer table, this will happen. You will see this blank row, blank in this case country, that groups all the customers that have an invalid customer key on the sales table. Now, we have a uh, measure now, a sales amount, which is uh, computing the sum for all the transactions in sales multiplying quantity by price. So far, so good. Now, let's create uh, um, a measure that adjusts this value by reducing to 99% by 1% the amount of any customer is in, that is in Europe. So for all the customers that are in Europe, we want to consider only 99% of the sales amount and all the other customers outside of Europe, 100%. How do we write this index? Well, I prepared a, a measure to do that where I say, okay, for each customer, let's start with this one, sorry. For each customer, and I use distinct just to show you the, the potential issue. Uh, for each customer, for each unique customer, sorry, for each unique continent, for each unique continent, because I want to create a, um, uh, a calculation that is based uh, on uh, on uh, the customer continent, right? Because we want to apply this uh, depending on the continent of the customer. Well, for each continent, I get the sales amount of the customers in that continent in the current filter context, which means that if we are, for example, computing the value for Netherlands, then we will include only Netherlands, but Netherlands is in Europe, so whenever we intersect Europe and Netherlands, this amount will be multiplied by 99. Whereas if we use, for example, United States or Canada we, or Australia, we will see the, the entire amount. So let's try. If I move this measure here, we see that as we expect for Australia and Canada, the numbers are identical, whereas for the other uh, countries here, the number is different because we have a, uh, we reduce the number by 1%. So far, so good. But now the problem is that if you see this blank, this blank has no value at all. And this means that also the total, the total does not include that blank row. Now, you might say, well, Marco, this is correct because uh, if we don't know <laughs> if the customer is in Europe or not, we don't want to consider anything. Uh, possibly, yes, but from another point of view, what happens if I include uh, this uh, calculation in the calculation by brand? So let, we could say that when we look at the data by customer country, uh, the numbers we see can be explained. But look at what happens when we see the value by brand, product brand. We don't have the customer here, but if I use the same measure, sale adjusted incorrect, because in this case, uh, you, the use of distinct is not what we have to use. Well, in this case, uh, we repeat the same process, but distinct does not include that blank row, does not include that blank continent that groups all the customers that are in the sales table, but don't correspond to any existing customer in the customer table. And so this means that also in the brand, we are excluding the calculation of the sales to customers that are uh, unknown, I would say, right? That are connected to this blank row. And that's the reason why for each brand we have a lower amount compared to what you see in sales amount. And the total we have here, the grand total, is actually identical to the number we have here. Now, as I said, this could be what you want. But in my experience, 99% of the times, you have a sum, you have an additive measure, for example, you're computing the revenues or the margin, something like that, and you iterate over something that could have the blank row, probably 99% of the time you want to include that blank row, which means that using distinct, using distinct will exclude, will ignore a few customers, but will ignore also the transactions of those unknown customers. In this case, this is what, not what you would want. And so in this case, the right thing to do is to use values. Values continent, values column. So whenever you want to iterate a column and you want to include the blank row, use values. And in this case, if I use values, let's see what happens. First of all, you see that here we have a number 
that is much closer to the original number, and we actually applied the reduction to 99% to Europe only. We didn't do anything for uh, the customers that are unknown, so we kept the original amount. We could have made the opposite, so 99% for um, everyone that is not in a continent that is not uh, Europe, so, um, sorry, the opposite. So, but anyway, so we could have inverted the logic, so we could apply 99% or 100% or for the blank or not, depending on how we write the code. For example, we could have said, uh, uh, do 99% if it is not in uh, North America, in America, in Asia, and so on. And that will have included a blank for the uh, 99%, for example. But th these are just ideas. The, the thing is that we are able to iterate over those customers by using values. So values is usually the right thing to do whenever we have uh, an additive measure with a sum because we don't want to lose transactions that are not assigned to a specific dimension, in this case, the customer. Let's take a look at the brand. So if we, if we see the brand, so let's, uh, let's move this uh, down for a moment, and let's move this uh, with more space. If I include the right, the sales adjusted right calculation, the correct calculation, you see that now the number we have at the total here is much closer to this one because we are just reducing 1% for Europe only, everything outside of Europe, including the unknown one, keep the original value. This is just an example, but in general, values should be the right thing to do by default. Unless we have a good reason to do something else. And what is a good reason? Well, every time the iteration must uh, use a single value, and not aggregated multiple values, that in that case probably we want to use distinct. Very generic definition. What, what, what does it mean? Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to the... So let's remove a few measures here. Now let me try to introduce a different calculation. We will use this later, and let's move this uh, back here. And uh, let's see if I can introduce another calculation. The calculation could be, we want to compute the average by city. So considering an uh, element in a geography, like a county and a country, in this case the country, we want to get the value for each city in that area. We want to do the amount of the sales amount for all the customers in the city, and then what we want to compare, sorry, we want to compute the average by city. Well, so let's do that with values, right? Because we said oh, we, we had to use values by default. So we iterate the city. For each city, we compute the sales amount. We do the average. Very simple. Well, if I do that, now what happens? In Australia, we have uh, many cities. And so the sales amount of Australia has been divided by the number of cities that we have there, right? So because we iterate uh, city by city. And the same for all the other countries. So you see that the number we have has a certain variation. But let's say the minimum is uh, 1,000, or closer to 1,000, the maximum is closer to 5,000, and of course there should be, let's say, um, how to say, th there is a sort of uh, um, weighted average here, because uh, underneath we have uh, like a division between uh, the number you see in the sales amount and the number of cities we have in each uh, country. Now guess what? How many cities do we have here? We have no idea. I mean, I have no idea. I could have any number of customers in that blank row. That blank row represents all the customers that are unknown. Um, we don't know the customer, we don't know the country, we don't know the city. So how can we say how many cities we have there? It's impossible. Even if we counted the number of uh, unique customers, the sales uh, um, customer key unique values, right? So if you computed the distinct count of customer key in sales, you could have a number of unique customers, but you still don't have a valid number for the number of cities. They could be all in the same city or in different cities, so we have no idea. But even if we have no idea, the way we wrote the code says, well, we have a city, a single city, the blank city, right? Because all the, all the, all the colors are blank, including cities. So there is a blank city that includes all the cities of all the, sorry, that includes all the customers in a single blank city. And so this means that we are using this number, which represent multiple customers as a single, multiple cities, as a single city. 
So we we have that number as as it, as it was the value for one city, and because it is so high, it is increasing the average we see in the total. I mean, the numbers that we have here, the numbers we have for each country are are the same, are correct. But the problem is that this number is moving this number up. What is the right thing to do? Well, it depends, but probably in this case, I probably want to ignore that blank row because that blank row represents uh, an unknown number of cities. So I prefer to exclude that. I know that I'm not doing the right calculation, but the error I introduce by ignoring them is smaller than including all of them as a single city. At this point, instead of using values, I want to use distinct because this distinct will ignore that blank row. So the number of unique values returned by distinct does not include that blank row. And uh, this means that if I use this calculation, now this is the right calculation to perform here, because in this case, uh, we have no idea about this average, because we have no idea about how many cities we have. But at this point, this number is the correct weighted average of the cities in all the countries that we know, that we selected, that exist. So that's uh, the idea for uh, the difference. So, so, so the, um, the idea behind the choice. So the best practice should be use values all the times, unless you can uh, have a good reason why you want to use this thing. And a good reason is that in your algorithm, in your calculation, you don't want to consider uh, multiple customers as it was a single one. So whenever this could happen, you prefer to exclude that amount rather than including it. In the former case, so whenever we have a sum, usually we want to use values. Whenever we have an average, we, ha we have, uh, for example, mean, max, you don't want to consider, imagine you used max x. Max x will have said, oh, there is a customer that has uh, uh, this number, 1,700,000 thousand right so this is clearly wrong right and so whenever we have a, 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 a calculation where it is important to evaluate the individual customer as an individual customer or the values of aggregated customer as a single one without uh, mixing uh, many unknown customers together we want to use this thing but this is usually the exception most of the times you probably want to use some access so probably you want to use uh, values by default unless you know that you have a good reason to say no in this case we have to use this thing because and you complete the sentence and usually at that point you have a good reason so let's recap by default use values to iterate the values of a column there are cases where you want to use this thing but those are usually exceptions particular calculations usually non-additive calculation so if you have a good reason use this thing otherwise by default Use values to iterate your columns. Enjoy, ducks!